Hello everyone, welcome to the third of my videos on exam technique. Today we're talking about planning your answers. Now obviously this is particularly important with your longer answer questions. So <clears throat> tip number one, read the question. I cannot tell you how many students get questions wrong because they didn't read it properly. It is super tempting to just grab a familiar question or a question that you want to answer and not actually answer the question at hand. And one way to stay on point is to highlight the key instructions and the key command words. So let's do that here. <clears throat> uh, we've got explain. Explain is the command word here and I've underlined some other important parts of it too. So let's have a look at this question. Graphite is a form of carbon that's used as a lubricant. Explain in terms of structure and bonding why graphite conducts electricity and has a high melting point. Explain in terms of properties why graphite is used as a lubricant. Right. So. Now put yourself in the examiner's position, right? Put yourself in the examiner's perspective. They want to look out for particular points that you've made so they can give you the marks. What they do not want to do is search through a load of disorganized, illegible nonsense. They are not going to give you extra marks for writing a huge amount and hoping that the answer's in there somewhere. So the, that pepper shot approach is not good. So my advice is to bullet point your answers. That's always a good one. If you don't want to do that, then bullet point them in your plan and then put them together as a full response. So let's produce a plan for this question here. Um, there's a diagram here. The examiners have given you a diagram, giving you a nice hint of some of the things they want you to write about. Now, this is a six mark question and it's in two parts. So I think we should aim to make about four marks for the first part and maybe two for the second. So let's just see how it goes, shall we? So here we are. Graphite is in the form of carbon. Use lubricant. Explain in terms of structure and bonding why graphite conducts electricity and has a high melting point. Um, OK, right. Let's write a plan for that bit, shall we? So one, the high melting point. So here we go in the margins on a scrap piece of paper. Just jot some ideas down. Now, I know it's a giant structure. It's a giant covalent structure. I can see I mean, you, you can get that from the question. It says it's carbon bonds, carbon, carbon. That's non-metal. It's got to be covalent, right? I can see by the picture there's lots of them. So let's stick that in as well. Covalent bonds are strong. And if they're strong, guess what? they're going to need a lot of energy to break them. So that's three points for why it has a high melting point. Why does it conduct electricity? Well, the electrons are delocalized. De -lo they're not local, they can move away. So this means they can carry charge from one place to another, and that's why electric current is. So there you go. I've just, in the margin, on a scrap piece of paper, I've just jotted down some ideas that I know about. Now we're ready to put them together, and this is really, really easy. Um, to make it easier for the examiner to give me the marks, I'm going to use the words structure and bonding in my answer because those are words that they used in the question. If you're using the words that they used in the question, they've got to give you the marks. Make it easy for the examiner to give you the marks. So let's put those points together. The high melting point of graphite is due to its giant covalent structure, which contains lots of bonds. These bonds are very strong and a lot of energy is required to break them. The property of the electrical conductivity is due to the ability of electrons to become delocalized and move electric current. That sounds pretty good. And it all came from that little plan. I think that looks like about four marks. So let's move on. The second part of the question. I think we only need about a couple of marks for this, maybe two. So explain in terms of properties why graphite is used as a lubricant. So back to the margin, back to the scrap paper. What do you know? What do you know? What can you see on that piece of that diagram, that diagram is actually a big help. Most students wouldn't even look at it. It's slippery. It has to be slippery because the question tells you it's used as a lubricant. That doesn't come from knowledge. That comes from common sense. It's in layers. You can see on the picture it's in layers which can slide over each other. Um, and the reason they can do this is because they have weak intermolecular forces. Um, intermolecular between the molecules. If it was within, it would be intramolecular. So there you go, there's three points that I can make in terms of it being used as a lubricant, put them all together and we get this. The fact that graphite is an excellent lubricant can be explained by the fact that the carbon atoms are in layers with weak intermolecular bonds between them. These layers can slide over each other, making graphite slippery. Once again, I've just taken three very quick points that I scribbled down in the margin and put them together to make something that sounds pretty good. So there's my full answer. 
I won't read it to you again, but that would get you four marks for sure. Now, I know that there are points here where you've had to have the knowledge and certain key words like intermolecular, but hopefully I've shown you that once you've written out that basic plan in the margin on a scrap piece of paper, putting it all together is easy. So that's it, ladies and gents. That's the third exam te technique tip. Write out a plan. I will catch you for another tip next time. Take care.